Okay, a toy rocket is uh, these problems today. These problems today are all about, well, they deal with uh, finding the max and min in real life situations. And what are some of the ways we come at these problems? Okay, a toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launch pad seven feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 120 feet per second. Now what they're doing, what the writers of this problem are doing with that sentence is they're about they're showing you the data that went into making the formula we're going to use. The height H in feet of the rocket above the ground at T seconds after launch is given by this function. And let me do that. We have two questions here. We have two questions. How long will it take the rocket to reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? Well, there are some questions you have to ask yourself. What we're dealing with is this function. Height as a function of time. Equals negative 16 T squared plus 120t plus 7. Now t is time and h is height above the ground in feet. Time is in seconds. What you're going to notice is that we're using t instead of x, but they act exactly the same way. And we're finding, whoop, we're finding a maximum, trying to figure out where that came from, aha. There we go. What we're doing is we're finding a maximum of a quadratic function. So that means we're finding what we would normally call H K comma between them, where H is the X coordinate and K is the Y coordinate. However, this time the letters have changed. H of T is acting like Y and T is acting like X. All right, so what that means is we're going to be looking for a vertex that consists of the time it takes for the rocket to reach its maximum height and the maximum height, well, we can call that K. So let's get to it. Instead of H equals negative B over 2A, we've got T equals negative B over 2A. So T is going to equal, I get my B and my A over here, negative 120 over negative 16. So I'm uh, uh, two times negative 16. Negative 16 is A, and this is 2A on the bottom. So this will be negative 120 over negative 32. And that's what I'm going to put into my calculator. Let's move this over. 120 
or I should say, I guess, let's let's just be completely honest here. Negative 120 divided by negative 32. That's 3.75. Now we can use decimals in this problem. So we've now answered the first question. These are going to come up separately. You know, the way questions sometimes appear separately. All right, it is going to take the time to reach max, maximum height. Time to reach maximum height. is 3.75 seconds. All right, now the next question, what is the maximum height? What is the maximum height? This is the same kind of question we had yesterday when we were talking about maximum and minimum values. It's always K. So K is calculated by taking the H number, which is a T, 3.75, and putting it, uh, substituting it for every T in our formula here, negative 16 times 3.75 squared plus 120 times 3.75 plus 7. OK, I'm double checking here to make sure that's right. And that when I calculated this, that was right. OK, so. Now we're going to calculate this. have to put it down there so I can see what to type. Okay, negative 16 parentheses 3.75 parentheses closed squared. You don't really have to use parentheses. It's just something that I'm used to doing. So let me clear it and do it an easier way. Negative 16 times 3.75 squared plus 120 times 3.75 plus 7. Enter. 232 feet. So you have this toy rocket that shot into the air from a platform seven feet above the ground. It'll look something like this. There's the platform. There's the path of the rocket. It goes up 232 feet and then comes back down. Boom. 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 And this whole process is going to take 3.75 seconds. So what is the maximum height? 232 feet. It's pretty good for a toy rocket.
OK, we use the same formulas that we used yesterday when we did that complete analysis of a um, quadratic function. Now this is a little harder, a little trickier, but it's definitely doable. A one compartment vertical file. I have hanging files in my office. A one compartment, so we're talking about one of them. Vertical file is to be constructed by bending the long side of an eight inch by 14 inch sheet of plastic along two lines. That is, this is the long side. We're gonna fold the long side and they've drawn two lines that I hope are straighter than that and more evenly spaced than that. But that's going to allow them to fold this up so that each side is X high. So this side is X inches high and this side is X inches high. Now, um, bending the long side, yes, of an eight inch by 14 inch sheet of plastic along two lines to form a U shape. Now, we're also going to have to find this side. Well, we know that this is eight and the whole thing is 14, but what is that? Well, 14 altogether minus this X, minus this X will be 14 minus 2x. So that's what it's going to be. So let me get rid of this question mark. And instead I'll have 14, whoops, 14 minus 2x. How tall should the file be? In other words, what is X? What does X need to be in order to maximize the volume it can hold? So we want the maximum amount of stuff that we can put in there. And so we need to know what the volume is, the maximum volume. So we need to fold it in just the right way. Well, you need to know the formula for volume of a rectangular thing like that. All right, so volume equals length times width times height. Well, let's see, the height is X. The width is 14 minus 2X. And the length is 8. So that's what our volume is. All we have to do now is work this out. What is the volume? What is the, what is the function representing the volume? And how can I maximize it? And what is the maximum? So actually we're not being asked what the maximum is, are we? We're being asked what X needs to be in order to maximize the volume. 
So this is going to be easier than it looks. But first, let's take care of this. V equals 8 times. I'm going to distribute the X into here so that we have 14X minus 2X squared. And then I'll distribute the 8. But what is 8 times 14? Let's make the calculator do the work. 8 times 14 is 112. So V equals 112 X minus 16 X squared. So the volume can be represented by negative 16 X squared plus, because this is positive, plus 112x. Ta-da! All right, now that we have our function for the volume, notice that this is x squared, so it's quadratic. And the leading term is negative, which means you have a cupped down parabola. The vertex will be at the top. And it will be a maximum point. So now, I mean, so they're asking the right question. We have the right formula to be able to maximize it. Now we're only being asked what X is. So we don't have to find all of HK. H is enough. H is the max, the X that needs to maximize the volume. So H equals negative B over 2A. Let me scroll this up. H equals negative 112 over two times negative 16, which will be negative 112 over negative 32. The negatives cancel, but we might as well just let the calculator do that for us. Negative 1, 1, 2, divided by negative 32, enter. Three and a half, 3.5. Well, 3.5 what? Inches. So, each side needs to be 3.5 inches in order to maximize the volume. They're not asking for the volume. What is the maximum volume? They're not asking that. Only what does X need to be? So X is going to be, let me write 3.5 over here. 3.5 inches. Okay, there you go. It's wonderful when you're only asked one question. The volume is what we would normally be maximizing. But even though we want to maximize the volume, it's the arrangement of the sides that will cause that volume to be maximized.
OK, so important for you to remember volume equals length times width times height. Aki's Bicycle Shop. I imagine that being um, a little bike shop down on, on Dixon Street. Aki's Bicycle Designs has determined that when X hundred bicycles are built, the average cost per bicycle Oops, a uh, dog on it. There. Let me clear that. The average cost per bicycle, um, the average cost per bicycle is given by this formula, this function. Now, also very important, X is in hundreds. So for instance, if we came up with an answer like X equals one, we wouldn't be saying that Aki needs to build one bicycle. All right, where C of X is in the hundreds of dollars. All right, so let me write C of X beside there, just to keep them together. C of X which is really why, of course. Now, how many bicycles should, there we go, how many bicycles should the shop build to minimize the average cost? Well, that makes sense. We all want to minimize our costs, unless we go on a buying binge. And we just regret it later. OK, so we need to find the number of bicycles. In order to minimize the cost. Now let's look at this function. It's quadratic and the leading term is positive. So this is a cupped up parabola. The vertex gives us the minimum. So this is the right question to be asking. We're going to minimize this. That is, we need to be able to minimize the cost, but we're not being asked to do that. We're only being asked to find the number of bicycles that need to be built. That's X. So since this is HK, and H is the X coordinate of the vertex, we're just gonna be finding H. X is the number of bicycles in hundreds, and that's all they care about. Okay, so the number of bicycles that need to be built in order to minimize, did I say maximize? I'm used to saying maximize, but this is minimize. The number of bicycles that need to be built in order to minimize the cost is negative B over 2A. Which is, okay, over here, A is 0 0.5 and B is neg equals negative 0.4. OK, so B, we're going to have negative B and B is negative. Over 2A. And A is positive 0.5. So this will give us negative negative 0 0.4, which is positive 0 0.4 <clears throat> divided by, let me make that a little more clear here, this decimal. 
2 times 0.5 is 1. 2 times 0.5 is 1 because 0.5 is 1 half. So we're going to have 0 0.4 over 1, which is 0 0.4. Aki only, yeah, Aki only needs to build 0.4 bicycles. Well, no. 0.400 bicycles. 0.400 bicycles is going to be 40 bicycles. So Aki needs to build 40 bicycles to minimize the cost. We aren't making a statement about the rest of the profit, though. They're not asking that. So 40 bicycles. Don't be caught saying 0.4 bicycles. It doesn't make any sense. B I C Y C L. I just got hit ah, by a bug. Go away. The price of having a cat door. Where was I? Right there. C Y C L E S. OK, and that's all they're asking for. How many bicycles should the shop build to minimize the average cost? Per bicycle. OK, now. We move on and in this question, we're being asked about profit but we're not told what the profit is. We have to calculate it. The profit of a company in dollars is the difference between the company's revenue and cost. The cost, C of X, and the revenue, R of X, are functions for a particular company. The X represents the number of items that need to be produced and sold to distributors. So they're going to build something and then sell them to Walmart and then Walmart will sell it to us. So their customer is a distributor like Walmart or Amazon or Target. Amazon would pro oh no, Walmart too. Anyway, what are we being asked to do? Determine the maximum profit. Well, we're just being given the cost and the revenue. So we're going to have to come up with our, our own profit function. Okay, well profit equals revenue the money that comes in, minus cost. The money that goes out. So here I have to, I'll scroll up in just a minute. P of X is going to equal R of X, which is 840X minus x squared, minus 2400, plus 40x. So there, here's our revenue that is the formula for the revenue, 
And here's the formula for the cost. Functions and form formulas are very similar a lot of the time. Sometimes they're the same thing. So P of X is going to equal 840X minus X squared. Now, minus 2400 minus 40x. Great. I'll combine like terms. 840x minus 40x, these are like terms. There is no other x squared term and there is no other constant term. So we can even write this in the correct order. Negative x squared plus 800x minus 2400. And that is the formula for our profit. Notice it's a quadratic. And the leading term is negative, which means we have a cupped down parabola, which means the vertex is a maximum. So since we're trying to determine the maximum profit, we can use the profit formula to count, um, that is we can use the vertex formula for P of X in order to find the maximum profit and determine the number of items that must be produced and sold to obtain the maximum profit. That is, it's the X's that are going to make the profit be maximized. The thing is, is that when you're dealing with HK, which is the vertex, you've got to find H first. But here, it's the second question. So, onward. Let's see, where should I go? Let's go down here. H equals negative B over 2A equals I've got to jump back up here to see. All right, 800 is B, so negative 800 divided by 2A, two times negative one. So I'll have negative 800 over negative two and that will be positive 400. We need to produce and sell to distributors 400 items. Items. In order to maximize the profit. Now to find the maximum profit, We have to do this. Negative, we have, well, I'm going to write it again. Negative x squared plus 800x minus 2400. Okay, what k is going to equal, well, let me put parentheses around the x because the X is what's being squared, not the negative sign. 
it's very easy to make a mistake when you don't have like a negative five. No, this is just a negative one times X, which is 400. Eight hundred times four hundred. Writing it a little too small here. So let me move up. There we are. This is what I want. Negative four hundred is going to be squared plus eight hundred times four hundred minus 2400. Clear. All right, excuse me. Negative 400 squared. Now you don't need parentheses if you can remember it's the 400 and not the negative that's being squared. Plus, 800 times 400 minus 2400. All right, negative 400 squared plus 800 times 400 minus 2400, enter. So our maximum profit, K, should be in US dollars, one, five, seven, six hundred. Probably don't need decimals. All right, but now there's the problem of putting it in the right place. The H number let me make this smaller again. The H number is the number of items. So that needs to go here. Determine the number of items that must be produced and sold in order to obtain a maximum profit. Mm -hmm. And the maximum profit will be 157,600. So this is H and this is K. And we got the right numbers. That is, our numbers agree with them, with my math lab. Okay, that's the tricky part here. That and the fact that you have to actually come up with your own function based on the fact that P of X equals R of X minus C of X. After that, it's just finding a vertex. Okay. Now this is, I don't know, I would call it a more normal kind of problem. And it's even multiple choice. Yardbird landscaping has 56 meters of fencing with which to enclose a rectangular garden. If the garden is X meters long, express the garden's area as a function of length. Okay, so now let's read it again. 56 meters of fencing. To enclose a rectangular garden, that's important, it's rectangular, so we're talking about a rectangle. Now X, the garden is X meters long. Well, what about wide? 
Well, let's figure it out. We have. Yeah. It's just because I draw lousy rectangles. L W. That is a typical garden. Let's make a flower. Nobody says math can't be fun sometime. All right, it's ugly. That's why I didn't draw the rectangle. OK, so we have 56 meters of fencing to go around this garden. Ah, good grief. What did I do that for? Because I'm looking at my flower, thinking about the flower. L, what? Where am I? There, L and W. There you go. All right, this 56 meters is going to equal L plus W plus L plus W, or if you prefer, L plus L and W plus W, which is 2L plus to W. Now we're being told that the length is X and we need to solve for X. It's going to be X meters long. No, that's not what we need to do. If the garden is X meters long, express the garden's area as a function of length. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's do that. 56 equals 2 times L plus W. Divide both sides by 2. Now, 56 divided by 2. 56 divided by 2. Is 28. OK, so 28 equals, scroll up, L plus W. And so now let's see what this thing looks like. All right. So if I were to subtract W from both sides, I'd get 28 minus W, better do that. 28 minus W equals L. All right, so let's see. 56 meters of fencing with which to enclose a rectangular garden. If the garden is X meters long, express the garden's area as a function of length. OK. Now let's leave L where it is for the moment. No. No. OK. That's not a good way to do it. I need to go the other way because I know what L equals, which means I should have made that an X right away. I'm going to do it now. 
Well, I'm going to do it now. 28 equals x plus w. Remember, it was 2L plus 2W, and we divided out the 2 as a common factor. Now, W equals 28 minus X. That's what the width is. Duh! Now we know what the width is. It's important because area of a rectangle equals length times width. In other words, area equals x times the width. And the width, let me make an arrow here, the width equals 28 minus x. So area A equals X times 28 minus X. So area equals 28X minus X squared. And since these are both X's, we can say that area is a function of X equals 28x minus x squared. Ta-da. All we have to do now is look up here. 28 minus x squared. Doggone. And that's all we're being asked to do. We're not even being asked to maximize or minimize anything. Nevertheless, it's a good skill to learn. Okay. Okay. It made sense, you see, to subtract the L over here since it was X so that we could do this, this step. But doing it wrong would have shown you. Now we're going to do a kind of a hard problem. Let's read the story. Let me have a drink of water. A daycare center has 36 feet of dividers with which to enclose a rectangular play area. The space in a corner of a large room to enclose a rectangular play space in a corner of a large room. The sides against the wall require no partitions. Suppose the play space is X feet long. Answer the following questions. Okay, here's what they're saying. I'm going to get my trusty rectangle out again. This time I'm going to make a room. This is a room. Okay. <coughs> now we're going to use this corner. I've decided that. This is going to be where our play space is, and so we need to kind of separate it. Maybe it's for one particular age group. So I am going to take my dividers. See if this works. I never know. We're going to take the dividers. Yay!
Ugh. Okay, so there are the dividers. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, now, so a daycare center has 36 feet of dividers. So this side plus this side equals 36 because over here we have the wall and the wall. So that's why we only need the dividers here. Now, suppose the play space is X feet long. Well, this is the longest side. The longest side is usually the length. So this is going to be X. Now there are 36 feet all together. So 36 minus X is going to be the amount left over here. So we have a, a, a rectangular play space that's X by 36 minus X. Is it meters? No, it's feet. Okay. Now suppose the play space is X feet long. Answer the following questions. Okay, let's go over to the questions. First question, express the area A. Notice I, I didn't have any way around including the answers because this is one of those problems where the questions come up separately and to make them come up all at once, the answer shows. So I didn't have any choice here. I apologize, no mystery. Express the area A of the play space as a function of X, that means make it A of X. Well, okay, the length times the width, let's write that, A equals length times width. Make that bigger, All right there. Now notice it says do not simplify. That's why they left it like this. Because they're about to ask you a question you have not heard before in a word problem. And that's they're gonna ask you about domain. What is the domain of this function? So let's go back and look at where the function comes from. This, the length and the width. This is a rectangular space. Now to find the domain, you have to ask yourself what would make this rectangular play space not a rectangular play space? Well, I'll tell you. There are two things, actually there are three things, that would make this not a rectangular play space. If X were to equal zero, then all 36 feet of the dividers would be, I should do it down here, would be up against this wall. That would mean they hadn't been used yet. That would mean there is no, oh no, don't go away. <laughs> All right, well, oh well, oh well. I should have left it the way it was. Wall. So let's, yeah, yeah, here's a wall. And here's a wall. Wiggly wall. 
That's why I like to use prefab um, rectangles. Okay, but now, if this side were zero, zero feet long, then all 36 feet of the dividers would be up against this wall. And you would not have a rectangular play space. So in order to find the domain, here's what we have to do. We have to say, okay, what if X were zero? X would be zero and you would not have a play space. That means that X cannot equal zero. And now that's the length. If the width were zero, then if you add X to both sides, you get 36 equals X. So if X were 36 feet long, there would be no play space. So X cannot be zero and X cannot be 36. What if X were 37? It couldn't be because you, you only have 36 feet of, of uh, dividers. So this is nonsense right here. So, what that means is X can equal any number of feet. Now, we're just saying, does it make sense? Not really, but X could be really close to zero as long as it's not zero, or X could be really close to 36 as long as it's not 36. And what that means is we're talking about the existence of a rectangle. So there could be a rectangle, even if it doesn't meet our needs. At least there's a rectangle if X is between zero and 36, but not equal to zero and 36. Ah, but they wrote it in interval notation. And that's exactly how that would be written. Right here. Between zero and 36, but not equal to zero and not equal to 36. Brackets mean that X could equal zero and X could equal 36, and that's totally wrong. Again, we already showed what would happen if X did equal zero and if X did equal 36, well, there wouldn't be a rectangle. All right, now we're saying, suppose you felt like graphing this, X times 36 minus X. What kind of graph would you get? Well, let's, let's multiply it all out first. A of X equals 36 times X minus X squared, which is negative X squared plus 36 X. That's quadratic, that's negative what we would have is a cupped down parabola. Let's look. Ooh, that's right. It goes over here too. So here you've got four graphs. One, two, three, four. None of them are cupped down except B. This is a cupped down parabola. Going from zero to 36, not quite 40. So this is what we want. But process of elimination 
would have shown you that. You don't need a graphing calculator. Now, what are what dimensions yield the maximum area of this rectangle? That is now let me erase x equals zero because it doesn't. And let me erase x minus 36 equals zero because it doesn't. Now, how are we going to make that area the absolute biggest it could be? I don't know. Yes, I do. Look at what we've got. We've got A of X equals negative X squared plus 36x. That's negative 1 times x squared plus 36 times x. OK, now it wants to know what the dimensions would be. It would be helpful if I found hk, don't you think? at least H. I have to go rescue a bird, I'm pretty sure. So let me see what time it is. It's 11.34. I'm going to put this uh, on pause and I'm going to let you all go. I need to rescue a bird. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. It wasn't a bird, it was a monarch butterfly. No, oh, no, don't come in here. It wasn't a bird, it was a monarch butterfly, so I rescued the monarch butterfly. <laughs> 